When I signed up with an agency to do after-dinner speaking, they said I needed a USP, a unique selling point. I didn't think I had one, but I do. And it's this, I am the only Church of England vicar to have had a number one record, rather an arresting statistic perhaps, and one that people seem curious about. And one of the reasons why I wrote the book was to try to explain how someone like me got from being in a band like the Communards in the 80s to being vicar of a church like this in Findon now. The story actually began near here because I was born not very far from here in Northampton, the son of a local shoe manufacturer in the days when we had quite a few of those. I went to the local public school where my father also had gone and it was there really that I first became involved in music and also in church through chapel. Loved the music of chapel, loved the whole Anglican choral thing, thought the content was complete nonsense and actually started an atheist club while I was in the choir with my best mate Matthew Gamage. I left school under something of a cloud and then went on to Stratford-on-Avon to an FE college where I could study drama with A-levels, a sort of finishing school for delinquent middle-class teenagers. Then an unusual stroke of good fortune, I got run over and with the money I got from criminal injuries compensation, I bought a saxophone and a ticket to London. It was there where I first started out working professionally in music, busking by the Royal Festival Hall, versions of what was on in the concert hall that night, so badly that one man offered us £10 to stop. It was then also that I met Jimmy Somerville, a, like me, a sort of runaway from, well, in his case, Glasgow, from me, provincial England, to reinvent ourselves as young gay men in London in the 1980s. And out of that came forth Bronsky Beat, one of the most distinctive bands of the period, Jimmy Somerville, one of its most distinctive voices. I played saxophone with them, thanks to being run over. And then Jimmy and I started our own band, The Communards, and had this extraordinary sort of five-year period of being the most unlikely pop stars that Britain ever produced. Much of those adventures are in the book, not all of them seemly, but there you go, sex and drugs, and if not rock and roll, 80s synth pop instead. And then a change. A great material success coincided with a great catastrophe, the arrival of HIV, which had a huge impact on my circle, and indeed on any circle of gay men living in a big city in a place like Britain at the time. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Out of that came religious curiosity, came back to my surprise. And one thing led to another, and I found myself going back to church again, then going on to university to do a theology degree. And then after a 10-year interlude in BBC Radio, which is as near to the Church of England as you can get without being the Church of England, off to theological college and ordination. And at that point, volume one of Fathomless Riches stops, and volume two will in due course begin. <laughs>